This is a discussion of experiment 12, thermochemistry. Um, this is part A. So what you're going to do is you're going to get an unknown from Brian. Um, it's going to be an unknown metal. And what you'll do is you're going to, when you get the metal from Brian, it'll be in a large test tube. You take it and you measure out about 30 grams into uh, one of your large test tubes. It doesn't have to be exactly 30 grams, but make sure that you record three places past the decimal. You're going to clamp that test tube to a ring stand, put it into a beaker of water that's, also, that's on an iron ring with wire gauze with a Bunsen burner underneath, and you're going to heat it up. Once it starts boiling, wait five minutes. What you need to do next, before you do anything with the metal, is record the temperature of the boiling water. Now, I know it should be about 100 degrees, but it probably won't be exactly 100 degrees. Um, put your thermometer in there, measure it to the nearest tenth of a degree, record that. Your, your procedure, I don't believe, says this, but this is going to be the initial temperature of the metal. We're assuming it's the same as the temperature of the water because it's been in there for five minutes. Also, while this metal is heating up in the boiling water, you're going to take a styrofoam cup and you're going to measure 25.00 milliliters of water into it with a volumetric pipette that you get from Brian. And you will put a thermometer in there and record the temperature every 15 seconds for 1 minute and 45 seconds. Right, You're going to be working with a partner and you'll have to work together to do this. Right at exactly at the 2 minute mark, the test tube should be already just taken out of the water, use a test tube clamp, it's going to be hot, and add the metal, dump it right into this 25 mils of water. You're going to then continue record, recording the temperature of the water, stir, stir the metal around, shake it around so that the water, let's stir the water with a thermometer, being careful not to break the thermometer. Record the temperature every 15 seconds starting at 2 minutes and 15 seconds for oh, about 3 more minutes. Okay. What should happen is the temperature should rise and then come back down and it might not do it in a steady manner it might go back up a little bit come down but the trend should be down that's the data that you need you're only going to do this one time part a what you'll do is you'll re you'll plot temperature of the water versus time now before you add the metal the time of mixing is this red line right here and there's not going to be any data point here the points over here will be the temperature of the water before you add the metal. And it should be pretty much the same. It might be exactly the same. It might be going down, might be going up a little bit, but record them, plot them. And then, no points here, but then at 2 minutes and 15 seconds after you've added the metal, you'll, the temperature should be warmer. And it might go up and come back down, something like this. Record that. Plot that. What you're going to do is you're going to draw your best fit straight line through the points before you added the metal, down here in blue. And then find the part of the graph that looks like it's going down and draw the best fit straight line through that and extrapolate both of these lines to the time of mixing. So draw that red line here, that's the time of mixing. Extrapolate the blue line, extrapolate the green line. Where the blue line touches the red line, that's the initial temperature of the water. Where the green line touches the red line, that's the final temperature of both the metal and the water. So that's the experimental port portion. Now for the calculations. Here they are. So the idea here is that Q of the metal is equal to minus Q of the water. And we know that Q is mass times specific heat times delta T. So mass of the metal, specific heat of the metal, delta T of the metal is equal to negative, remember that sign, mass of the water, specific heat of the water, and delta T of the water. Solve this equation for the specific heat of the metal, which is what the first thing you're looking for, and you get this equation right here. You pretty much have everything you need to plug into here. To get the mass of the water, okay, you know you measured out 25.00 milliliters. Look up the density once you get the temperature. Remember, the initial temperature of the water is where that blue line crosses the red line. That, look up that temperature in the CRC handbook in the lab. That will be your initial temperature of your... I mean, yeah, that's the temp initial temperature of water, and you'll use the density to find the mass. 
the specific key of the water, you know that, 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Mass of the metal, whatever you weighed out, about 30 grams, but three places past the decimal. Delta T of the water is the final temperature. Remember, that's where the green line touched the red line. Minus the initial temperature of the water, that's where the blue line touched the red line. And the delta T of the metal is the final temperature. Again, the same one as over here, where the green line touched the red line, minus the initial temperature of the metal. That was the temperature of the boiling water. Plug those in, get the specific heat of the metal. That's one thing you're going to report. The next thing you're going to calculate is use the law of Duong and Pettit to approximate the molar mass of the metal. Then all you do is take the number 25 divided by the specific heat that you get for the metal from this calculation over here. Once you do that, you should have an idea of what metal it is. And you're going to also tell me that in the conclusion. In the conclusion for part A, you're going to give me the specific heat of your metal from the calculation the molar mass from the law of Duong and Pettit, and you're gonna tell me which metal you think it is. Now you're allowed to use common sense here. Um, if you, you know for one, we're not gonna give you anything toxic, and we're not gonna give you anything expensive. If you get gold as the answer, it's probably not it. So just use common sense, and it has to be a metal. So that's the experiment 12 part A, both the experiment and the calculations. I'll do part C in a moment.